for these two since it's the final final time performing together at Unite uh, Victor Doherty and Mark Thies thank you you both uh, so welcome everyone to the final uh, the final uh, service of our Unite 1215 interspiritual service I am I feel so blessed to be with you all here today, I have a big mixture of great excitement for what's coming forward, and I spent the morning in tears looking over old photos of all of you guys, and I feel especially touched by the fact that these two individuals, Victor and Mark, we're here at the very first Unite service. So, so for all of us to kind of come back together it is really special. And I actually would love a, a show of hands for any of you out there who were actually here at the very first service. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, I've been here from the beginning. Good for you. You know, we've grown a lot. So, so wow, what a totally new group. So I do want to give a shout out to those who are watching on YouTube because it turns out there are a lot of folks who were here from the beginning that really wanted to be here today but didn't, um, you know, ones in California, et cetera. So I just want to say hi to all of you and kind of bring you here energetically with us. And just a quick note too, when we first started with Unite, Mark and I decided to call ourselves the Heartbeats. Well, the band's not over, we're just gonna start calling ourselves the Offbeats. <laughs> 
Awesome. <laughs> oh, how I miss having you up here. <laughs> so, so, the offbeats. All right. So, so where was I? Um, <laughs> so, yes, to, uh, this is our uh, final Unite service. This is an inter spiritual service and an inter spiritual community. And what that means for us is while unity is both historically and culturally grounded in the teachings of of Jesus, teaching such as unconditional love, grace, and forgiveness, rather than the teachings about Jesus. We actively embrace the practices and principles from the world's religious and spiritual traditions, understanding that all of them have something to teach us and to inform us. And also, when we come together, we don't come together to get everyone to believe the same thing. It's not about dogma. Rather, we come together for a shared experience, ideally an experience of unity, love, and oneness. So I hope that whether you're here for the first time <laughs> or whether you've been coming for a while, that you leave here feeling more uh, brought into that space of oneness. And I want to say briefly that the talk title for today, Birthing a Greater Reality, it's funny, um, you know, it, it came to me to be the title, and I didn't consciously realize that the very first Unite service, the very first book series we did, was on the book Birthing a Greater Reality by Robert Brummett. So it's, it's really amazing here to come full circle and circle back to like, where have we been and where are we now and where might we be going, hopefully hand in hand together, energetically, spiritually, if not literally, physically. So with that, I'll invite the um, offbeats <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to, to launch us into this uh, time together with a wonderful song. Yes, uh -huh. and I'm going to uh, invite Maka to come oh, up and join yay. us. And so this song is called Awakening, and in this song there's a chant called Om Shanti Sat Chitananda. And Om, many of you will recognize from the Sanskrit language, is the sound of the universe reminding each one of us that we are a beautiful note in a grand cosmic symphony forever playing. And Shanti is a Sanskrit term for peace, and uh, Satchitananda just basically means truth, consciousness, and bliss. So you're welcome to chant along on that part of it. We are awakening. To the calling of the mystics Awakening To the flowering of the heart Everybody here Melting into presence Overflowing effervescence Rising in love
perfect imperfection celebrating all oh, the oneness of it all everybody here a part of each other all oh, my sisters and my brothers rising in love friend of mine, Robert Brummett, uh, also a seminary professor at Unity Institute and Seminary, uh, a mentor, good friend of Victor's also, uh, recounted a dream that he had had decades ago, years ago. In this dream, he said, he was walking along this really, really busy street and walking at a really fast pace. And had the sense that he was rushed, that everybody was rushed. And so there he was, you know, aware that he was rushed and watching everyone else be rushed. It wasn't clear, he thought, in the dream where everybody else was going and what they were doing and what they were rushing to. And then as he was rushing, he realized, I don't know where I'm rushing to. It's not clear where I'm going. And then as he's walking in this dream, as he's walking, he has this moment where he has this nudging thought, maybe this is a dream. And so he found a man who was strolling, you know, walking by, and he grabbed the man and rushed up to him, grabbed him and said, hey, is this a dream? And the man's like, you're crazy. I have no idea what you're talking about. This is real. And so Robert moves on. And then he goes and he sees a woman and he spots that woman, he goes up right to her and he says, are you real? And the woman looks pretty offended, he's like, what are you talking about? Of course I'm real. And then Robert keeps going, he's a little bit like, what's going on here? And he sees like this old man, looks like a Hindu sage in a beard with his eyes closed, sitting on a blanket in the middle of the city. And everybody is ignoring him, but Robert, decides to run up to the man and ask, Sir, is this a dream? And the man opened his eyes, said, Yes, but if you tell everyone, they'll think you're crazy. And he closed his eyes, and Robert woke up. Is this a dream, he says. The beginning of awakening to what we in unity refer to as the kingdom of heaven, a consciousness of oneness, of love, of unity, of truth. The beginning of that requires that we first even recognize that we're actually, for the most part, living in a dream. Some of us call it sleepwalking. You know, we go back again to the story of Genesis, and in that story, here in Unity, we interpret the Bible metaphysically, allegorically, symbolically, rather than literally. In this story, at the end of Genesis, Adam falls asleep, and nowhere in the Bible does it say that he woke up. This metaphor of being asleep and needing to wake up permeates the world's religious and spiritual traditions. And so, as we've journeyed together from the beginning of our time here in Unite, it struck me that from the beginning, we were based on this intention, 
that, yeah, there were places that people go to, because the music rocks, and it does here. You know, there are places people go to for community and for friendship, but that the core of what we would be about here at Unite, that at the core of what I was about, was about waking up in consciousness. The idea that as we dream, we tend to believe that we are these separate individuals fending our way through life alone. You know, this, these lone egos that decide, you know, wow, the world is scary. For some of us, we don't believe it's safe. For others, we don't tend to believe there's love available for everyone or resources for everyone. And that in that place of, of separateness, we scramble, we cheat, we lie, we, we manipulate our way into finding the love, securing the love, preserving the love, the finances, and the security that we see. But what I've seen during this time is not only, you know, there's a saying that we teach what we most need to learn. And I see in myself from the beginning how even at the early years of Unite, that there were ways in which I felt very alone, that I felt like I had to do things all by myself. You know, there are ways in which I really uh, barred intimacy. There are ways in which I really believe that my uh, lovability was conditioned on doing well, doing enough, working hard, on sacrifice, and not something that is what we teach in unity is your innate birthright, which is this idea that what if, what if so long as we dream, so long as we f stay under this illusion that we are not just by our birthright entitled to all peace, all joy, and all good, so long as we dream, we can't welcome and access the kingdom of heaven, that bounty of good, the infinite love that is already in this space in every moment. Victor's song in the beginning. Yes, Victor's song. <laughs> Would you like to sing it again? Holy ground. You know, the beauty of that song, though we we're singing it in a church, the beauty of that song is it, if you listen to the words, where you are is holy ground. What that means is that you don't even need to come here. This is not the space in which you find holiness. Holy ground is exactly where you are. We have a prayer in unity. Wherever you are, God is, and all is well. And so the journey is only about what in you doesn't yet believe that and what in you can begin to wake up to that. And as I look at my own journey over the years and the journey of those who have walked with me, I'm amazed by how, you know, there are people who, for whom I've seen this uh, love open up, you know, a zest for life, you know, a, a, a breaking through of walls in which, oh, the before I didn't belong, but now I know I've come, I've come to know that I belong. I see this story of coming to belonging. Oh, when I first came, I had big forgiveness issues. And now I realize I've forgiven, you know, those members of my family that hurt me. And because of that, I've been able to move forward from my victimhood into this other space. And so I marvel at this. And today, if I leave you with one thing, it is simply the reminder that every moment of your life, this moment, the next moment, everything that surrounds you, every person and every circumstance is part of the oneness that is spirit. And in that place, we can like wake up to, oh, there are ways in which I didn't see that, not because it's not true, but because of the filters that I have put, that I've put limitations on my view of what love is and of what love means, right? And so in this book, Robert, oh, so Robert's book, Birthing a Greater Reality, sets forth a few like basic criterion, and I have it on a slide so it's easy for you that I'm going to leave you with. The basic idea for us as we journey forward is the reminder of something I've taught here often, which is first, make friends with paradox. 
And what that means for me is this. On the one hand, you know, I can teach you that you're divine, that you're whole, but in a moment, like if I'm in tears and I'm suffering like this morning when I was like, <sighs> you know, I'm walking, looking at your guys' pictures and I'm like, okay, okay. You know, like, like I don't want someone to tell me don't cry because you're, you're whole and you're divine. The paradox is while that's true, I'm also fully human. So in every given moment of our lives, if you can fully embrace exactly the totality of your being and not say, uh, you know, I should be over that by now, right? That was 10 years ago that my dad passed away. I should be over that by now. But instead, for me, making friends with paradox is holding this deeper knowing, yes, being willing to hold the space of the knowing that I am one with spirit. But how about embracing also my humanity? That maybe when I do so, when I do so with my heart and not just with my mind, that I'm able to welcome and come into the fullness of the moment. Make friends with paradox. Cultivate the power of attention and intention. Those of you who have journeyed with me uh, through the studies of the Enneagram, and if you haven't, I'll, I'll talk uh, after uh, today's lesson about how you can begin to. One of the beautiful things I've seen about this is the Enneagram, in a way, describes the way that our focus of attention becomes distracted by a certain compulsive way of being in the world so that we cannot fully attend to the present moment and the beauty of this moment. Consider, what is it that tends to take your attention away from just being present right here? Some of us tend to be nostalgic for the past, type four is more on the Enneagram. Some of us are constantly planning for future good, the sevens on the Enneagram, or planning against future disaster, the sixes on the Enneagram, right? That threes, planning for all the things that you can accomplish that will one day make you worthy of love, one day in the future, sometime, right? And the fives, trying to figure out, like, if I know enough, I'll be okay, I'll feel good, solid, okay. You know, we jump around in these ways. The type ones on the Enneagrams will tend to think, like, when I'm good enough, after all the self-improvement work, you know, growth, you know, so the paradox, understanding the paradox, recognizing the ways that your focus of attention leaves the present moment and be, having the skill set, the awareness to go, oh, there it is again, there it is again. Coupled with the power of intention, the beauty of simply holding the sacred intention to know truth, to know yourself, to know God, all of that being the same thing. And Robert Brummett says very beautifully in his book this, that the beauty of the truth of your being, that you are already all that, if you could just let it in, is that even if your attention sucks, even if you're not good at it yet, merely having your compassionate intention to know breaks through that. And in this moment, you can say, can I just let joy be here right now? Can I let a sense of okayness and well-being be here right now? I'm willing, I hold the intention, and that alone changes and shifts our attention automatically. So the power of intention married with attention. The third thing that he brings forth as a way of preparing us to, to birth a greater reality together in the world is to, to hold the sacred embrace of everything that is. Have you ever been in a situation where, like, you know, I've had this, you know, in relationship where, oh my God, I'm so happy, this is so good. And then I think, oh, are you going to stay? Are you going to stay? The moment I start worrying about the future, the moment I become attached to this good, 
I've jumped right out of my good, right? Wow. So in order to protect myself from the fear of loss, historically what I chose to do is not embrace what was going on. Have you been there? It's like you don't even let it in. You don't let yourself like it, want it, or enjoy it enough. Can you let this moment be embraced by you? Can you let the moments that, as soon as it's about to trigger, like, <gasps> what if it goes away, right? That you just invite yourself to embrace what is and stay unattached with the act of faith that says, you know what? Oh, you know, I love you, Knight, exactly as it was. Or I like Nian exactly in her position as it was. You know, just recognizing that, like, I can... <gasps> I can relish this moment, I can relish this song, and the song will end. But if I trust in spirit, then I know that new future good is bound to unfold. But I can't even receive it, right, if I'm clinging to the old, right? And I can't even experience it in the moment if I'm already future tripping. So embrace everything, but be attached to nothing. And then the fourth, he says, listen, listen, and listen. The universe speaks in a thousand ways. Those of us, when we begin this uh, conscious spiritual journey, find that we have synchronicities everywhere we go, right? When you decide that, yes, I want peace, inner peace, I want well-being more than I want that to be right, or more than I want to control the situation, that I want that, then suddenly it's as if the whole universe starts to speak to you, right? And this beauty, I mean, I actually get this. You talk about weird things that happen. Um, just this weekend, so I had... Last December, I worked so hard that I got shingles last December. Some of you remember that. And a few uh, days ago, I was, um, I was not realizing that in all my enthusiasm for this new career shift, you know, I've been working basically from like 4.30 a.m. to like midnight, but I thought it was okay, you know. I thought it wasn't overworking because I was so excited. And then I had this like, my tongue puffed up like one night, and I'm like, that's weird. Maybe it's like I ate something. But then the next day, I had like another like, like inflammation on my face. I'm like, this is really odd. And then like the day after that, I woke up with like, like my forehead puffed out, my eyes. I'm like, oh goodness, something's, something's off and awry. So I, I, I mentioned it to two different friends, and they happen to know that I don't have health insurance. And like two people said, oh my gosh, Nian, go to the doctor, and I will pay for you to go to the doctor if, if it will get you to go there. And I had this moment of, wow, like talk about coming to a place in my life where like I receive now. What, what a crazy gift to like just have people who aren't like my family so just like offer to pay for this. So that was already amazing. And, um, but what happened was, so I didn't, you know, I ended up working most of the day, waiting to see if something would happen. And then, finally, I'm like, Nian, it's one o'clock and your face is still puffy. <laughs> so maybe you should schedule that, like, Walgreens appointment. I mean, this was just a couple days ago. And so I did. And there I was, you know, in this, some random Walgreens, like near the Troost area, and it was just the first appointment I could get. And I walk in, and um, the woman asked me if I had insurance. And she said, and I said, oh, what my insurance was. And I said, well, I don't have insurance. And, and she said, oh. And then she looks at me. She said, well, if we finish this conversation within 90 seconds, I don't have to charge you, you know, like for the appointment. And she's like trying to gift me this thing. And then, and then she's, I said, well, and then she said, and if you try this over-the-counter medicine, it could work, and tomorrow, like, come back. And I'm like, I can't come back tomorrow. I have to work on my sermon. I'm a minister. And she looked at me again, and she said, where? 
I said, Unity Temple. She's like, oh, I used to go to Unity Temple. And, and she says, I just haven't been in years. And she tells me the story. And then, like, she shifts into some weird angel mode and, and suddenly starts ministering to me. And she said, oh, you're doing a career change. Oh, you know, you need to, you need to um, remember, just remember that you are spirit. And then she started talking about you are going to be receiving things and you just have to get out of your own way <laughs> like and open up to the flow of the universe and then she says you know i've been a contemplative all of my life she did not know that i teach contemplative practices in the enneagram and if you, usually in unity, people talk about aff affirmative prayer. They don't talk about contemplation. She's like, oh, I've been a contemplative since I was a little girl. I would go to this abbey and, and go and light candles. And I'm like looking at her. And we stopped and we looked at each other for like a few seconds just looking at each other in the eye. And, and she just affirmed. She's like, you are so on your right path. And I'm like, this may be the whole reason I'm here today and the whole reason I had this incident listening, you know, just at the messages of the universe. So by the time I was done, she's like, oh, do you have a spiritual director? And I was like, well, I was actually just sort of let mine go. And I was needing, she said, well, there's an Abbey in Atchison. I mean, the ridiculousness of here I am in Walgreens, right? And this woman starts telling me like some of the next stages maybe of like my spiritual path. When we open, when we are attentive, when we have the intention to embrace life and we take each step as it is, we really have no idea what's going to come before us. But when we're attentive, we can listen, right? You could bet I was on the website for that Abbey looking up the nuns, you know, it's as easy like, what is there for me that I don't even have any idea of like whose other lives will change as a result of this? How will this woman's life change? Will she come back to unity at some point just for having seen me here? The way life works, this is just one little example of the kinds of things that have been, have been happening continuously. Like, like maybe, maybe we're all one. Like maybe if, if you're listening to the filters of not enough and you just go forward with the right next step, that you'll be given the answer for the right next step and that's all you need. And then you go into that step and you don't just worry about the next step but instead you open and embrace each moment. Like even in that moment, I could have been like, oh, this is all about going to Atchison. And instead, I literally, I stopped. I stopped and I looked into this woman's eyes. I was like, it's just this like, I know you, who are you? I know you, you know? Like take the moment. I was talking to a friend recently even about this notion of like, the way that we uh, run from the intimacy of the moment. In the moment, we have everything we need, but we're too fast for the moment. We think too fast, we move too fast to really embrace and listen in that way all the time. But as we become attentive, intentional, as we embrace the moment to know that the moment already embraces us, we start to live into another way of being. And then finally, Robert says, to birth new worlds, we must learn to dance with chaos. It struck me how um, as, I'm launch as I leave my associate position to go into a business and to start this evolving Enneagram ministry. I've never owned my own business before. There's so much unknown in this. You know, there's no knowing of like, like how will I be sure to get paid, et cetera. You know, like when will I have health insurance? You know, that, these questions. Relationship-wise, you know, I've, many of you know, I've had a huge transition in relationship. Uh, Victor and I have in the, in the past year. There's complete uncertainty around that. And just a day ago, when I sat down, I was like, oh, 
you don't know anything about your life, Nian. Like, you really don't. Like, everything, in a way, feels like chaos. Everything's up in the air. But everyone who's close to me can see, right, that like, oh, there's something working. There's something beautiful happening, right? When you're sitting in the middle of it, that's not what it looks like. And I think that's true for all of us. The perspective of like there's an apparent chaos to the mind of the ego that says this is out of order. This is not secure yet. This is not under my control yet. How can this be good? <laughs> and to instead go, ah, oh, ah, oh, your old life was not in the order that you needed it to be in for the new you to thrive. So it's like God throws up this confetti, and everything goes like this. And some of us go like this and try to grab, 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 right? But what if we didn't? And we just let that all fall and unfold like a celebration of life into this next new moment of being. So those five things to birth new worlds, we must dance with chaos. And the chaos now of even for each of you deciding, oh, what services will I go to? I highly recommend a Victor's uh, Buddhist service if you're interested in Buddhism. But just even kind of reorienting yourselves around this space and this time. Birthing a greater reality. A lot of times we come to the spiritual journey because we personally are suffering, right? Many of us, I started in 12 step and it was like this moment of, um, I'm tired of making the same mistakes over and over and over again. I'm tired of using all my sparks and somehow still not being able to find peace and happiness. And so we often come to the spiritual journey kind of humbled and wanting healing for ourselves. But what I have seen as I have journeyed with each of you and at what I've seen for my own path is in the beginning, I come to learn that I am whole. And then in the process, I come to learn that I am one with you. And that my life and your life, like we're intimately intertwined, that we belong with each other, that no matter where we journey sort of in the physical outer world, that what I do impacts everyone else, and even what I think impacts everyone else. And so the invitation of Robert's book is no small invitation. It's the idea of this, that you embracing how lovable, how enough, how perfect, how just right, how grounded in spirit, how wise you are, that by you doing that, you actually serve a greater world. Because what these spiritual, in these universal wisdom teachings teach in essence, is that when we wake up, unity is automatic. When we're in this mode of separateness, the earth suffers. We go to war with each other. We don't treat each other like we belong. But as we do our individual work of awakening to the gift that is for us, we learn how that gift is to be given to the world. And so for me, that so happens to be that at this time in my life, the, the, the feeling and the call of like what is happening isn't about so much leaving Unity Temple because as many of you know, I'm actually going to continue to be teaching here. But it's about being grounded here and expanding into serving the larger world and actually going global with some of these Enneagram teachings. How amazing and exciting is that? As I think about it though, I realize that going global in the world of form is true for some people but not for others. But being global in the realm of essence and spirit is true for each and every one of you. I deeply believe that it doesn't matter if you even leave your house or not. 
But when you welcome love into your heart, when you forgive someone a long-standing trespass, when you wake up to the realization that you will always be secure in every moment and life will gift you, that every moment of your awakening is global and serves the world. And so with that, I actually want to end by sharing a video that I created, um, Thus the Tears. Uh, and this video is simply a, a collage of photos. I know I don't have e all of you in here, but photos throughout the years of, of folks in Unite, in Unite Fellowship, etc. Amazing, amazing. You will do amazing things, amazing, amazing, you will do amazing things, you will do amazing things. Things with a choice each new day brings And with every step you take Bless the progress that you make The reason you live Is there in every gift you give Love your life, love your dreams You will do amazing
As I walk, I walk in beauty The universe walks with me In beauty it walks before me In beauty it walks behind In beauty it walks above me In beauty it walks beside me Beauty's all around me as I walk I walk in beauty As I play, I play in beauty Universe plays with me In beauty it plays before me In beauty it plays behind In beauty it plays above me In beauty it plays beside me Beauty's all around me as I play sings through me in beauty it sings before me in beauty it sings behind in beauty it sings above me in beauty it sings beside me beauty is all around me as I sing And he 
energy inward and join me in closing our outer eyes and opening our eyes of faith dropping our attention into our heart space allowing your heart to feel as open as you will possibly let it be here in this moment and sometimes in the midst of transition change loss it brings up older loss ancient grief and if that arises for you then let that be here also and if joy and excitement are deeply alive for you in this moment let that be here also let yourself be fully here in all your complexity embrace the moment by embracing yourself exactly as you are this room exactly as it is this moment of life taking your time on your own being with a non-attached embracing of anything that arises for you in your physical body in your heart in your mind here now alone but also together in the silence As you bring your attention gently back at your own pace into the space of your body, some of you might want to just hold your hand over your own heart to stay connected to your heart space as Victor brings us out of the silence.
and we'll move from there into a song that's a prayer. May the light of your heart shine in glory. May the quiet your mind ever renew. And may the spirit of life be your reverence and illumine all that you may do. Go into the gold. connected as you can to your own truth in your heart as we start to move this inner energy outward you may want to if you're brave um, as we sing this song pray this prayer maybe send some um, love to a neighbor a stranger uh, send some good wishes their way this is an Irish blessing, of course, because it's Victor. So, so let's just move this energy of connectedness to be aware of our relational space here together. So in order to make room for these new adventures and energies, sometimes we have to say goodbye to the old things. So this is how we do it in Ireland. <laughs> Maybe the room to meet you and the wind is always at your back and the sunshine warm upon your face Come 
Let's take a moment, actually. I want to acknowledge all the volunteers who have served at our Unite service over the years. Would you please stand so that we can honor and give thanks for you? Platform assistant, ushers, everything. <laughs> oh, John. Thank you. Huge, huge, huge. There's so many lives. You know, again, I have people that I work with from other states, from all the way out in California, because they listen to these services. You know, so the impact of what you do here, you know, have done over these years that impacts people around the world. Actually, even from Pakistan, I had a note from someone who then I met at the Enneagram Intensive. So it, the trickle effect is amazing. So thank you, each one of you, so much. And I'm looking forward to the next phase of the journey. And with that, I want to go to the next slide right away. For those who are like, what's going on today? Um, I just realized, so the context is that I'm se I've stepped down from my associate position and Duke still wants me to teach the Enneagram here. But, but really, um, I'm going to be independent, an independent contractor and really bring forward this work for global transformation, really looking at the ways in which each of your lives, of our lives, have been changed over these years in a way that opens us up to more life, more love, more peace, more spirit, and to bring forth that into a larger stage. So it's so exciting, but I'm still around also. So based here and going all sorts of places, and so that's how you can contact me. And the next thing I'm going to be teaching here is a beginner's class. So if you're new to the Enneagram or if you just want to refresh your next slide, um, October, Mondays, 1 to 3, and I'm going to be able to offer more classes because of this transition out of my associate role. I'll be able to continue to offer more classes, more CPE groups, et cetera, to, to, to be able to serve each of you, I, I think, more thoroughly, actually. So. Well, I won't see, see my brother when I lay my burdens down. Well, I won't see him, see my brother. 